What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back on another Monday here to complain about the New York Jets offense. They struggled again for the second week in a row against the Minnesota Vikings. Aaron Rodgers did not play well. I want to specifically go over why Aaron Rodgers looks like he's struggling, what's causing it, and just overall the main problems on offense for the New York Jets. And look, there is a piece of the pie for everyone here. There is someone like there's blame to go around. It's not just one thing. While Nathaniel Hackett is a major, major problem, and we'll get to that, it's not fair in this equation to go. It's all on you, Nathaniel Hackett. It's your fault. It's not the case. The players have to execute better as well, and we'll break all that down. I, I want to start, though, with Nathaniel Hackett because I think he is the biggest issue again there are some other things that the jets have to execute better that we will discuss in this show but nathaniel hackett especially in short yardage and critical situations with the game on the line has no gosh darn clue how to call these games there is no hiding it there's no sugarcoating it it's really really brutal and there was a specific moment in this game that stands out to me where the New York Jets have the ball in plus territory, it's fourth and two, and they decide to go for it. A little bit controversial. I had some pushback that uh, the Jets should have just kicked the field goal. I think that's a conservative play. I didn't have an issue with them going for it in this spot, honestly. My issue lies with the play calling decision in this situation. Now they decide to run with Braylon Allen, smart decision, but the formation that they use is an unmitigated disaster. They run out of the pistol. So Dan Orlovsky of ESPN, of ESPN had an absolutely great breakdown of why it was such a bad play call. So look how far back Braylon Allen is. He's like nine yards from where he actually has to go uh, and, you know, to pick up the first down. And Allen gets the ball on the 31 yard line because obviously it's a pistol snap. Aaron Rodgers turns and hands off. And he's got like seven yards at this point to pick up the first down. It's just, it's ridiculous. If you're going to run, that's fine. Go under center and have, you know, Jeremy Ruckert or, you know, pick somebody to be lined up as the fullback that Braylon Allen can run behind. Again, like, I don't have an issue with the play the, the the play to go for it. My issue lies with running on fourth and two. Let's run out of the pistol. I, I mean, come on. This is on the heels of a week ago down on the goal line. You know, they're running out of, you know, they run Brees Hall into the line of scrimmage twice. Then they try to throw a pass to Solomon Thomas. And then they, you know, pre-snap penalty backs him up. They have to settle for a field goal. Down on the goal line, luckily it worked. Um, where Garrett Wilson ends up getting open after a long period of time. But the Jets ran out of empty set on on first and goal from the one yard line. Thank God it worked. But there's just so many moments in these games where you're really just sitting there scratching your head and going, this is I don't understand why they are doing this. Guys, let's talk about jeans for a second. I recently got a pair from the perfect jean and they're basically the unicorn of jeans. They fit like a dream, look fantastic, and are so comfy I forget that I'm wearing pants sometimes. In case you didn't know, this is an ad and the perfect jean told me to say this, but I wouldn't lie about how awesome these jeans are. They really do live up to the name. Here's a picture from literally yesterday when I was wearing them to my uncle's 60th birthday party last night. Super comfortable. They look good. They are my favorite pair in my jean rotation. The perfect jean also has a seriously massive range of sizes with six fits from skinny to thick, thick waist sizes from 26 to 50 and lengths 26 to 38. So it doesn't matter if you're a short king, thick daddy or something in between. You can find the perfect fit for your body that you're rocking. Our listeners get 15% off your first order plus free shipping, free returns and free exchanges when you use code O'Leary15 at checkout. That's 15% off for new customers customers at theperfectgene.nyc with promo code O'Leary15. He's on the thumbnail. We got to talk about him because this was the second game in a row that Aaron Rodgers just didn't look very good. And like there's reasons, a lot of reasons for it. We will we'll go through each and every one of them. I'm not putting all the blame on Aaron Rodgers, but it's unfair to just go, you're Aaron Rodgers, you get a pass. He is he flat out was missing throws in this game. The the biggest miss of the game 
was Garrett Wilson on the double move. He had him for a game-winning touchdown over the top. If he hits him, we, it is a t- completely different narrative and storyline today. We're talking about, oh my gosh, this team was able to come back from you know 17-point deficit. They showed a lot of resiliency. It wasn't pretty, but hey, you know Buffalo lost this week three and two, sitting tied up at top of the division with a big game coming up on Monday, and it's still a big game on Monday coming up against Buffalo. We'll get into that later in the week, but. Uh, it's unfortunate that he missed that throw on the first drive of the game. He missed Garrett Wilson on the sideline on second down. It was just, uh, he was open. He just threw it way out of bounds. It wasn't even close. And then he had three interceptions. He's only done that five times previously in his career before yesterday, but a three pick performance, he was the, the picks were not good uh, uh, each and every one of them. He didn't see the linebacker dropping back into cover- coverage. They showed blitz. He throws a, you know, a telegraphed interception. The second one was a complete overthrow to Alan Lazard. And the third one, yeah, it would have been nice if you had Mike Williams come back to the ball a little bit more. It was still a low throw. And with Mike Williams, he's a jump ball guy. Like I would, if you want to throw that back shoulder, I understand like, okay, but put it up high where he can go up and get the p- football, not where he'd have to come back to the ball and have to go over the top, essentially, of Stefan Gilmore. Another reason, too, in all of this, he's playing with a low ankle sprain. I thought I, I thought his season might have been over when he went down. Um, he was just getting beat up and beat up, and he just lets out a, a huge scream as he gets folded into a pretzel. He's gotten his ass kicked the last two weeks. It, it's been unbelievable how much he's been hit and sacked, and... A big issue for this is the Denver Broncos were the number one blitzing team in the NFL and the number two blitzing team in the NFL was the Vikings. So the last two weeks were the two top blitzing teams in the league and they took advantage of this Jets off one, the offensive line, but then number two, just Aaron Rodgers. They, you know, Aaron Rodgers wasn't able to get the ball out quick enough because, you know, I guess people aren't open. But at the same time, this is this is an issue for the Jets picking up the blitz. If you want a positive spin, this isn't a very positive video, but the Bill, Buffalo Bills blitz the least in the NFL at just 13.6%. So uh, maybe positive spin? I don't know. I'm reaching. Another element is the run game is truly horrible right now. They, they are not good enough and they aren't run blocking well, as shown here by Brian Baldigger. Like you see uh, Joe Tipman and... Uh, the, the left guard, John Simpson, blocking the same guy and then a, cl- a clear shot into the backfield um, for the Vikings defender there. It's it's you're giving Brees Hall no shot. Also, at the same time, two things could be true. One, the Jets are not blocking well and in, in their especially in the run game. And that is a big factor into why they're not succeeding. But also, Brees Hall isn't really hitting the second level the same way that he has in the past. Like. Brees is an incredibly talented player, and I do think he is good enough and has had a big enough sample size of success in the NFL that eventually he's going to get it in gear and, and get going here. But it's still frustrating to see, you know, someone of his caliber have another week of struggles. It was not a good day for Brees Hall and Braylon Allen also struggled. So it was two guys who just were completely ineffective in the run game. And I get it. The Vikings have, you know, one of the best, if not the best run defense in the NFL right now through the first five weeks of the year. But it's, again, like, I don't want to use those things as excuses. The Jets should be at a point now where they are competitive and are able to you know, get through whatever roadblocks are in their way, depending on the opponent. You're talented enough where you can hang it with any one of these teams. It's just time that you got to you got to find a way to make it work. And, you know, again, it's far frustrating that through the first five games of the year, they haven't looked good. Brees hasn't looked great yet. There's still 12 games to go. So I hope that they get it figured out. But again, that is a problem with the offense, too. And then I can't come on here today and not mention drops. I mean, Alan Lazard, I think, had four drops yesterday. He also had a touchdown catch, and I tweeted out that Alan Lazard might be the most frustrating player on this team. And somehow, some way, that naturally, some people were upset by that. But it proved my point because people were like, "Oh, you tweet that out, and then look, he gets a touchdown." I'm like, "Yeah, that's the whole freaking point. He has a massive drop a few plays earlier, and then it makes an unbelievable catch in the end zone. The variance with this guy is the freaking frustrating part." I'm not saying he stinks. Clearly, he could play. He makes big plays at times with Aaron Rodgers. I, don't, I guess he just was not trying a year ago with Zach Wilson, Trevor Simeon, or Tim Boyle. But it's insane that you have a huge drop 
not just one, four freaking times, and then a couple of plays later, you make an unbelievable catch for a touchdown. And look, I, I, I get that it's a hard play. He has to come up with that ball in the end zone for a touchdown. It, it's a, a really, really touch, a tough catch. I get it. That ball has to be caught. Aaron Rodgers had a strong reaction to it. The, uh, me at home, everyone had a strong reaction to it. it. It's I'm sorry. It's a tough play, but you have to come up with that ball. And honestly, we're going to get into this conversation now too. Devontae Adams isn't dropping the ball four times. I know, I'm know i not going to sit here and tell you that Devontae Adams fixes every single problem with this New York Jets team. He doesn't. But what he does do is he raises the floor and the ceiling of what this offense could be. They are hamstrung by coaching. They need to do whatever they can do to make this offense idiot proof. And I think Devontae Adams adds another level to that. And it's going to be a big week in the Devontae Adams stuff. We'll talk about that a lot in other videos. But Devontae Adams isn't dropping the ball four times. And with the acquisition or the potential acquisition of Devontae, that allows you to go three wide with Devontae Adams, Mike Williams and Garrett Wilson. That is significantly improved from where they were, you know, this year where they're including Alan Lazard or they're including Xavier Gibson. So you're pushing Lazard and Gibson further down the depth chart by doing that, which is a plus to begin with. But also, this is someone that Rodgers has chemistry with. Again, I'm not saying it fixes the coaching problem. Coaching is very much an issue. We talked about it in this video, but it helps make the offense better, which is something that they need to do. I feel like I'm in a time warp. It's It was a very... 2022 2023 Jets for the last two weeks. They allowed not uh, 10 points, excuse me, to the Denver Broncos and 16 points to the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are putting up 30 on everybody. They allowed 16 points because seven of them came from the pick six. So they allowed one touchdown in each of the last two games. And they're 0 and 2 over that stretch. If you want to look at it, I understand the Jets started out the year really bad against San Francisco. There's no, like, there's no sugarcoating it. The Jets defense did not play well against the San Francisco 49ers. In their four games since then, they've allowed 17 points or less on defense, and they're 2-2 two and two in those games. You have to win. You have to win these football games. It's so unbelievably frustrating. But those, to me, are the biggest issues with the offense. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.